Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome back to Sasha Reads, and this is another reading vlog. So the first book for this reading vlog I'm going to be reading, mm, one of them, one of the books I'm going to be reading this vlog is Hush by Dylan Farrow. Now, I am have started this book. It's... The start of it is kind of giving me um, a Ruin of Rosen vibes, just where everyone's just getting sick and the older sister is like just trying to save people, I think is the gist of it I'm getting right now. But they're getting sick by, I think, I think they call it like the blot and like they get all like this like ink marks and they get, the, do they explode? I don't know. Like I said, I'm not that far into it at the moment, but it's it's interesting, but I'm also <laughs> no idea what's going on. Now, at the moment, it seems like the bards are like your government, like your justice system or whatever. They can tell if you like say things, because if you say things, like you can kind of like speak things into existence, I think is what is going on at the moment. And like her dreams, Right now, she's like, this is all happened before, but I can't say that because then it might happen and then like I'll get executed. And ever since her brother died, her mum's been mute because her mum just doesn't want to talk anymore. So I think that's why like Hush is the title because you got to hush anyway. And the last arc that I have for this reading vlog is called Wicked Fate by Monique Stokes. I got this from the author and this is a paranormal reverse harem. I think. I'll just read you the synopses. Three monsters are after Zayda's heart. One is a vampire prince who's been waiting for her for centuries. She's so beautiful and she fits perfectly into his plans for the future as his bride. This world is changing and they'll rule it all together. One is a hybrid, a mixture of Bilal Dines. She's fated to be his mate and he'll do anything to protect her. Being son of the Lycan King, demon blood runs through his veins, but this has turned many against him and her. One is a demon tasked to protect her. He knows she can never be his, but the heart wants what it wants, even if that heart is pitch black and hails from the underworld. A storm is coming. Betrayal lies around every corner. No one can be trusted. Not when the weight of, not when the fate of vampires and lichens hangs in the balance. Zayda is the key to bringing an end to this war, but what if that comes in the form of bloodshed and bullets? And what if she can't do it alone? So, yeah, I'm uh, pretty keen to read this one. Like I said, this one comes out on June 13th, so I need to definitely read this book. I've started Hush, but I'm in the mood for something sexy at the moment, so I'll probably start Wicked Fate. Kids are almost in bed. Faye is at mum's house, so I'm going to just down and read. Husband cleaned the house today for me and it just looks so much better. I don't have to like sit and freak out about the mess. I know like I could just clean but I can't. I don't know why. I just can't. I just look at it and like freak out instead of just clean it. <sighs> but yeah. Um, yeah because I'm feeling something sexy I'm going to start reading Wicked Fate and then get back to you. So I am 27% into Wicked Fate and I don't know like so she's, she's been like betrothed to this vampire prince so she's a vampire and she's been all about her duty to like win this war against the werewolves hunts werewolves all the time she's like the best werewolf hunter of her clan or whatever finds out she's betrothed to the vampire prince and then like she finally like meets him the first time they're alone together like they're automatically like in each other's pants and it's like so like complete pull opposite attitude of two pages before like she's like all about a duty and she's got to like figure out what's going on with the lichens and blah 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 and then he like looks at her and she's like I can just tell that if he put his fingers inside me like I was gushing or something like that and I was like like uh, She's like, I've never felt like this before. So I don't know if there's like some sort of like weird like power this vampire prince has on her. It's um definitely jarring me, if that's the right word. She is now on a quest to go find, hello, some important key part to the war. And I think it's her next lover, because I'm pretty sure this is definitely reverse harem, because now she's got like two mates, maybe? 
I don't know, but we'll see. Zeta is all like badass and she's like, like wanting to win this war against the werewolves and all that badassery until she meets a hot guy and she's just like bend over like i understand their mates but do they seriously have to like before like introduce each other before they actually do it the plot and the storyline is great and then the sex scenes come in it's like did someone else write these but yeah that's my only only gripe at the moment if the sex scenes were even written okay but they're not they're so so bad i really wanted to like this book and um, like it's still like a bit three stars right now but i guess we'll see what happens because i'm pretty sure there is the third male in this harem that we haven't met yet so i just read th this sex scene between the hybrid and the vampire and like i said yep sex scene is still very cringe but i had i just so he finished inside her and she goes something hot and sticky spurted inside me come you mean come right he came inside you what do you think it is like like, like these these sex scenes are just i don't know if this author has ever written sex scenes before they're just very jarring from the rest of the book I, I just can't guys i can't okay so i didn't actually film anything else about this book but i just wanted to pop in and say i did finish this book and i gave it two stars because it was not a reverse harem this chick was just having sex with anybody that looked at her basically and it just did not get better and I feel really bad because the author did give me it but it was an exchange for an honest review and this review is read it if you want but don't have any high expectations like she did give me uh is it Selena from the Underworld series vibes but then the sex scenes were thrown in and they just would not they did not flow well with the rest of the book hello can you see the camera I'm just feeling a little slumpy at the moment, which is never, never good. Especially when I've got seven books on the go. So, right now, I think my priorities are A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. It's got multiple POVs and I think that's what's throwing me off at the moment. And then I am listening to Gideon the Ninth by Thames and Newer. Now I want to see one sci-fi. The kids are in daycare for an extra day this week. He's not well, which means he's not sleeping, which means I'm not sleeping. So I've just popped them in for an extra day just so I can rest. Because if my cup's not full, how can I pour out love to them? You can't pour from an empty cup. But yeah, I just watched Crystal's uh, latest vlog where um, she goes into labor. So I'm pretty excited for that baby announcement. I was stupid and stayed up to one o'clock last night as well, watching Ali's uh, 24 hour live, reading House of Going Breath, having all the snuggles today while reading. Um, I tried to read more, of, like listen to more of Gideon the Ninth yesterday, but for some reason the audiobook wouldn't connect to my car and it was just a whole thing. We're ready. Are we ready? You ready to read books with me? You use a bookmark, I use a comb. We're not the same. I fell asleep while listening to the audiobook for Gideon the Ninth. I don't remember anything of it so i'm gonna have to start again but it is almost three o'clock i think so i'm eating some lunch and i've started actually listening to the bennett women which is jan's book of the month for the full moon book club and that live show is wednesday morning i think so i'm going to listen to that um it's like on ku but it's also one of those like audible things as well 
So we're going to listen to that, eat my food, and then clean up the lounge room while listening to that. Just got a bill in the mail for a toll invoice. But my husband hasn't ridden his motorbike since like the start of May because he got a new job and he carpools now. Let alone rode it to Brisbane. I think that's where like Bowen Hills slash Kedron is. So I don't know what's going on there because he thought he had resolved that, but we just got a letter in the mail. So about 16% of the way into the Bennett women. I'm enjoying it for now. It's reading really YA, even though they're in college. So like their last year of college. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but we've got three main characters. We've only really focused on two at the moment. So you've got EJ, who is black and she's an engineering major. And you've got Jamie, who's trans and a French major. And then you've got Tessa, who's Filipina. And, um, is her major communications. And it is very much a uh, Pride and Prejudice modern reimagining of that story. There has been some, okay, this one text conversation between EJ and Jamie at the moment where they're talking about like the Mr. Darcy character and they call him a Malfoy. And if you weren't aware, Malfoy is a character in the Harry Potter series who is a big bully, basically. No one really likes him. But that author is very transphobic. So I don't know why the author of The Bennett Women thought that would be okay to put that in here. Don't quite sure. I don't know what the thought process was through that. The book was published in 2021. So um, lots, like... Everyone knows that that author is transphobic. That's just really weird to me. Did Jan just comment on one of my YouTube videos? Yes. Yes, she did. Not me fangirling over here. Also, while I'm reading her book club pick for June, The Bennett Women, which by the way, I'm like 47% of the way into it. The story's interesting. Like, it's probably gonna be like a three stars for me. I'm enjoying it but I probably won't read it again. The main character, EJ, is just, she's very snobby for like no reason. I'm preferring Will's point of view, cause like he's, like he can just obviously tell like he's in love with her, but he's doing it the wrong way. Like he's like, oh, I'll tell her, but like we have to keep it a secret. It's like, I know, <laughs> it's not what you do. And like his sister and his friend were like, yeah, no, don't do that. So I'm really loving his point of view of, every, of everything. Um, but yeah. That's all I really have to update you so far. I have a hair appointment today, so I might read some more while I'm there. But yeah, I just wanted to like have a little fangirly moment that Jen commented on one of my videos. Got my hair, dude. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like got some copper tones in it. I basically just went to my hairdresser and said, do what you want, I don't care. And she did, she's like, I just went back blonde, so I can't really do copper, but I want copper, so I'm going to do copper on you. And I'm like, sounds good, girl. How much more have I read of Bennett women? Read some while I was getting my hair done, and then I listened to some on the way home. I'm at page 221, so 61%. So I knew the miscommunication was going to be there, because it's Pride and Prejudice. Since they both talked about it with their like pers prospective sisters, they're now gonna hash it out, I think. So it's not that bad of a miscommunication, but still. I now need to film some stuff and then you get dinner on. So I'm gonna go and I will catch up with you soon. Sorry, I can't just get over how good my hair looks. Hi, me again. I did finish The Bennett Women. I gave it three out of five stars. Like I said, I really did enjoy Will's POV more than the others. Just watching him and like reading about him falling in love with EJ. It was just, it was really nice breath of fresh air. Yeah, there's really not much else to say about it. I then watched the um, live show on Jen's channel and we had some good discussions, but yeah, all in all, an average book. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to read a modern reimagining of Pride and Prejudice, I definitely definitely suggest picking this one up. It wasn't bad. I probably just won't reread it.